honored guest, Mr. Bill Gates, G20 Sherpa, Mr. Amitabh Kant, my fellow panelists, members of the audience, and friends from media. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Amitabh Kant for organizing this very good session on building resilient and inclusive economies. It's very relevant. I would also like to express my heartfelt thanks to Mr. Bill Gates for gracing this occasion. Friends, 2023 is going to be a landmark year in many ways. We have collectively overcome a pandemic that threatened the modern way of life. Digital technologies have come of age. They have become integral part of our lives. AI, 5G, quantum, they have matured to a level where they are becoming a mainstream, they are becoming mainstream technologies. In a sense, 2023 is an inflection point. It is in these exciting times that India has assumed the leadership of G20 group. Under the visionary leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji, India has created a unique framework for digital economy. This infrastructure is inclusive. It focuses on making a significant difference in people's lives. It places premium on openness. It emphasizes trusted solutions. Most importantly, these are the solutions which can be scaled to a population level. All this has been created over a period of time, last few years, and has been successfully implemented in a population, in a billion plus population. That's what makes it a really big achievement, really resilient framework which can be adopted by different countries. What is the uniqueness of India's digital public uh, infrastructure? The uniqueness lies in the way, way India approached digital economy and digital technologies. Unlike many geographies where digital technologies were, in a sense, concentrated in the hands of a few big tech companies, India created a unique public-private partnership model. And under this model, every stakeholder has an important role. What is this model? Take the example of the payment system. So using public funds, we created a platform. Now on that platform, more than four, about 400 banks joined, insurance companies joined, e-commerce companies joined. Practically every small MSME, every small large company, everybody joined. And 1.2 billion people joined that platform. That's the, that's the range of stakeholders. That's the public-private partnership. In this model, no single company or person has control over the infrastructure. Each and every stakeholder has a very important role to play. Each and every stakeholder, in a sense, democratically controls the entire system. This is what a system like UPI can, which has been created, and this is the kind of change it can make Launched in 2016, and in January 2023, if we see the numbers, on an annualized basis, today UPI does about $1.5 trillion worth transactions. The average settlement time is only two seconds. Only two seconds. These are billions of transactions happening every second, every minute, every day, and the average transaction time is two seconds only. Similar approach was taken to create other public digital infrastructure platforms. Imagine the complexity of managing vaccination in the, during the COVID period for a population of a billion plus and the challenges that we face in terms of our diversity, in terms of the various languages, in terms of the logistics challenges. Could that could that challenge be, have been met using physical infrastructure? I doubt. This is where Prime Minister Modi ji brought in the same concept of a public-private partnership. So with public funds, the government created a platform called COVIN. The vaccine makers joined it, airline companies joined it, state governments joined it, local municipal governments joined it, 
clinics joined it, hospitals joined it, and once again, 1.2 billion people joined it. And here we go, within a short time frame of 12 months, close to 1.5 billion vaccine doses were administered in a short, short period of 12 months. And by now we have 2.2 billion COVID vaccines. The entire process, the entire process from checking where the next possible schedule is available, scheduling that appointment, getting the supply chain functioning to the final certificate of vaccination, everything was digital. It's phenomenal. So India has made this, made it a policy objective to ensure that benefits of digital technologies reach all sections of the society. This is in line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji's political philosophy, governance philosophy, where the person at the bottom of the pyramid, the person on the last rung of the ladder, the person, the marginalized sections, they are the focus of all the initiatives that we make. That is inclusiveness, that is resilience. Friends, digital economy is today all powered by telecom. And we know that today the world is always searching for trusted telecom partners. I'm very happy to share in this forum that India has developed a complete end-to-end -end 4G, 5G telecom technology stack. It was a very, very difficult task, but within a very short time frame of about 20 months, a robust and totally virtualized telecom stack has been developed. It was initially tested for 1 million simultaneous calls. Then it was tested, that was around April of 22. Then somewhere in July of 22, it was tested for 5 million simultaneous calls. And in December 22, it was tested for 10 million simultaneous calls and the system is working perfect. And the first E node B, the basement unit on top below the tower which is placed, has been installed this week. So this is a very good journey which India feels happy to share these technologies with the world. And our Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji, has authorized us that whatever we have developed is not only for us. These are all open source, scalable solutions, transferable solutions, absolutely built with trust, privacy as the focus and he has authorized us to share India's public digital infrastructure with the world. Friends, this is our contribution to the world, and this is in line with our civilizational ethos, where we believe, we sincerely believe as a civilization, that the entire humanity is one family. And that's why the theme of this year's G20 is one earth, one family, one future. We are happy to share our experience to this extended global family. Thank you.